See, what frightens Satan is when we continue to do God's work and put our faith in Jesus Christ, even in the midst of the pain that this world inflicts on us. Everybody in here, except for maybe these young children, has some kind of pain in your lives, whether it's a loved one who's no longer here, whether it's job stresses, financial problems, who knows, the world is, is relentless in its ways of causing us pain. Pain and suffering come from Satan. But with Jesus on our side, Satan cannot win. And we need to tell the people out there about that. We need to get the word out. Because people out there are starving for it. Kyle mentioned earlier, 180 cards came back. People are searching for something and they get a, a, a card that offers a DVD that may answer their questions and may help lead them. 180 people. I would say that would probably double our number in this room. Let's tell them about it. Let's tell them about it. Paul, in writing to the Philippians, told how he dealt with the pain in his life. He had lots of pain himself. Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14, starting in the middle of 13. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. We need to do God's work. We need to follow Paul's example. We want to go home. And we want to take as many of these people out here as want to go. We need to get busy. So it goes back to the question. What in the world are we doing? It's easy in the cares of this world, having to work, having to get the car fixed, things like that. But if you sit back and you think about how each of us, if we each go back and ask ourselves, have I been complaining about nitpicky, unimportant things that I don't happen to like, but aren't necessarily gospel truth that should be done my way? Am I fussing because things aren't necessarily done the way I want it done? Should I remind myself that it's God's church and it's God's plan? And he did it for us. This is January. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. I remember when I was in college taking some very difficult math classes. One was the second calculus class. Uh, another one was statistical math. And anybody who's ever had either of those classes knows that they can be the source of waking up screaming in the night from nightmares, okay? Uh, even years after, maybe. And I remember in those two classes, when it came time for the final exam, the uh, professor told us we could bring in, in one case he said, you can bring in a formula sheet, an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper with whatever formulas on it you want to bring in. Because some of those statistical math formulas can be very, very complex, and he was aware of that. Okay? So, now what's on this piece of paper is irrelevant. It's just simply a filled piece of paper. Another professor said you can bring in a four by six index card with anything written on it that you want. Folks, let me tell you something. You have never seen such small writing. <laughs> as was on my card. It was on this side, on the other side. It was around the edges. If I could have done it, it would have been on the edge with a microscope. <laughs> I mean, that was a veritable encyclopedia of calculus on that 4 by 6 card. And thankfully, it wasn't too small to read under the stress of an exam, so it, it served its purpose. But 2008 is a piece of paper on which we've written the most recent year of our lives. And we think back on 2008, and we say, what's on that piece of paper? If I were standing here holding that piece of paper, and Jesus were to walk up to me and hold out his hand, 
How eagerly would I say, go ahead. Or they're like, you really don't want to see this. And he'd nod gently, yes I do. Of course, he already knows what's on the piece of paper, but we're still going to hold it back, you know. So when we think about what's on our piece of paper for 2008, we think about the fact that 2009 now lies before us like a blank piece of paper on which we will write the next year of our lives. So next year at this time, what's going to be on that piece of paper? We can't do a thing about 2008 except learn from it. That's pretty much what New Year's resolutions are all about. But I don't think that resolution is even a strong enough word for the important task that lies before us this coming year. I think commitment needs to be the word. When you're committed, you're all in. It's not in your life, it's, it's, it's your life. 2009 is clean and ready for us to write on it. And all we can do is learn from the mistakes of 2008. So I guess maybe if we look at our original question, what in the world are we doing, maybe we should rephrase it. Maybe we should phrase it, <clears throat> what in the world are we, what, excuse me, rephrase it, what are we doing in the world? We can come in, we worship each week, and we need to do that. We need to gather and study the word and pray and worship together. But if the only religious experiences we have are inside of here, how's that going to help the lonely guy that's in an apartment 30 feet away? How's that going to help people out there who can't pay their bills and don't know how they're going to make it? How's that going to help the person who's trying to kick the drinking habit or kick cigarettes or what have you if we don't tell them about it? If we don't tell them that the struggles that they feel and hurt from on a daily basis don't have to be faced alone. Jesus won't go through it for you, he'll go through it with you, step by step. So I guess we could each ask ourselves, what would happen? What could happen if we took all the time from 2008 that was spent complaining or criticizing and used that time in 2009 to spread the word to a hurting world that doesn't know about it yet? to a hungry world that's starving for it. And they show us by sending cards into us saying, you have something I want. A DVD that may give me some answers, that may help me with this sin-sick world. Wouldn't it be wonderful to click on CNN and there's nothing on the page except, well, nothing bad happened yesterday, so, yeah, I mean, it's just a blank page. Nothing bad happened, nothing to report, we're all going home. But that's not the world, is it? CNN can barely fit it all onto the page. They use such a little bitty print because they need have so much. Now, if you look way off in the corner down on the side, there's a little story about heroes, people who are getting out there doing things, because that's the nature of the media. They tell you the bad news, because the bad news sells advertising space. We have numerous opportunities to do God's work coming up in the next several months. Uh, and we, we, we need to participate. We need to use these opportunities so that when we get to the end of 2009, our piece of paper will show that we're committed to doing God's work. It will show whatever we can possibly do. I mean, it's a fact. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. Amen? We have opportunities. We have the soup and salvation that Kyle and Cindy are leading out in. That is awesome, the work that they are doing. And it is a blessing to be a part of it. 